Today I'm gonna showcase you everything you need to know on Alex Cave. This mod adds 5 new cave biome to the game, all filled with new blocks, mobs, items, and a ton of new features. And the first step in finding these biome, you're gonna find these little cabins in your world. They can be pretty much anywhere, but in them, you're gonna find mostly tablets, a cave compendium, but most importantly, the spelunky table. There is a tablet for every type of cave. Using the spelunky table will make you a cave codex that can update your cave compendium or to make a map that will lead you to a cave. Now to use the spelunky table you have 5 attempts to find a word. The first word will always be random so you can click anywhere and after that you can use the lens to see which letter correspond to what symbol. Or you can go on Google, look at the standard galactic alphabet and know that this one is moss, that this one is club, that this one is grossoceratops, and after 3 times you will have a cave codex associated to the cave that you searched. And with that, it's gonna search in your world for the cave and once it's find it, you now have a cave that will show you where to go. So let's move straight into the Primordial Cave. Now this place is a vibrant lush cave inhabited by dinosaurs and other extinct animals. Now this place may seem friendly at first, but some of the dinosaurs are quite ferocious. Inside the Primordial Cave, no vanilla mob will spawn, even if the light level reaches 0, zero. This cave has a new stone called Limestone. With it you can make a smooth limestone, and if you right click a smooth limestone with charcoal, you can make cave painting, there is 29 of them, but you can also craft a limestone spear. These limestones here have 4 attack damage, they are unbreakable and they can be thrown like trident. Around the ceiling of the cave you will find some amber and some amber soul. The amber soul is what produces this lovely light and if you break some amber, there's a chance that you find an amber curiosity. And this is one of the ingredients to make an amber monolith, is what helps repopulate the mobs around this area. I am not sure exactly what decide the mobs inside and after a few minutes it's gonna spawn a mob. The amber curiosity is also used to change the skin of all of the diamonds dinosaurs in the cave. Now let's move on to the vegetation, starting with the curly fern. It can be crafted into lime dye, but also into fern thatch. It doesn't really do anything, but you can find them on cliff. And also when you breed Grotoceratops, their egg will be on the fern thatch. If a Grotoceratops eat a curly fern, it will poop out a fiddlehead. And it is one of the main ingredients to craft the serene salad that we will see later. The fly trap is found pretty much everywhere and it can be crafted into red dye, but is also one of the main ingredients to craft the seatings too. If you eat the seedings too, you will gain the rage effects, which will boost your damage the lesser health you have. It can also be fed to a mob that has received some damage and will attack anything. The cicad is a plant that can grow anywhere in the primordial cave, and like cactus or bamboo, it can grow and will stack on each other. It is the main ingredient of the primitive club, and the primitive club is a special weapon with a low swing attack and has a chance to stun a mob for 15 seconds. It has another use that we will see later. The primordial cave has two type of Trees. One of them being the ancient trees. It is made out of jungle log, but it is the only way you can get tree stars. These tree stars are one of the ingredients of the serene salad, but also the primordial soup. And eating the primordial soup will give you the haste effect. And the other tree is the puwen. Puwen? Puwen? I'm not sure how to say that, but this one has a new type of wood and you can make pretty much anything you can want with wood. And if you destroy the tree and the branches, it will also drop pine nuts. And once again, it's one of the ingredients to craft the serene salad. You can also destroy the branches with a shear or a silk touch axe to get the puin branch. And now you can place the branch anywhere you want. In the last place you'll see in the primal Jordan cave is the archaic vine. It acts pretty much the same way as a weeping vine, which means that it crafts into nothing, but it has at least a 50% chance to generate compost. Now moving on to the mobs. All of them have a region except the Tridocaris. If you play some music, the dinosaurs will dance to the music. Now each egg from any dinosaur will pretty much work like either turtle egg or the sniffer egg. Which means they will break if you jump on it. You can prevent them from hatching if you put them on ice or amber. And now starting at the bottom of the food chain, we have the Trilocarius that will spawn in any body of water inside a primordial cave. Which means flowing water from the ceiling will also count. These guys will attack back if you fight them, but they are pretty easy to kill. They can drop raw Trilocarius tail. The Trilocarius tail can be cooked and the cooked version can be made into primordial soup. You can also bucket the Trilocarius. 
Now, moving on to the Subterranodon, you will mostly find these guys flying around. They also have nests on cliffs and corners and pillars of this cave. And if you destroy their eggs, they will get angry and attack you. They cannot fly forever, so after a certain time, they will land. And when landed, you can feed them raw Trilocaris to tame them. Tame dinosaurs can also be said to stay, follow, and wander. If you only right-click on a Subterranodon, you can start to fly. They have a meter of flight which means if they reach the meter, they will no longer ascend, but they are basically elytra. Even the advancement says it. And they also drop nothing. And you can breed them with raw cod. The Valum Raptor will mostly hunt and pack, and sometimes taking a larger prey. Sometimes there's gonna be an elder that is a bit tougher than the other ones. If they hunt and pack, killing the elder will make the other retreat. These guys are pretty intelligent. They can open door and will steal any meat that is found in your chest. If they eat a dino nugget, they will get into this rested state where you can feed them serene salad to tame them. A tame Venom Raptor will fight alongside you, but if badly damaged, will retreat into a stealth mode and will regen until coming back once it's healed. Venom Raptor can be bred with dino nuggets. The Venom Raptor or Subterranodon that hatch from eggs will be tame if the tamed parent are near. The Grotoceratops cannot be tamed, but you can breed them with three stars. If killed, they will drop some tough hide and some dinosaur chops. The tough hide is the main ingredient of the primordial armor. This armor only gives you 10 armor point, but will make any raw meat give you way more saturation and hunger. The dinosaur chop can be placed down or cooked and placed down and it basically act like a cake. And once finished, will leave you with a thin bone block. The cooked dinosaur chop is one of the ingredients of the seedings too, but can also be made into dinosaur's nugget, which is what you need to tame and breed the Volum Raptor. The Ritacheris is a giant bird-like dinosaur that if you feed it primordial soup, it's gonna go in a frenzy and knock down trees around. Yes, even the big one. They will drop bone, meat, but also a lot of feathers. And just like the Grotoceratops, they can be bred with three stars. Then there's the golden frog, which is basically a vanilla frog, except that if it eats magma cube, it's gonna poop out carmine frog light, which is a new type of frog light. And finally, the terror of the primordial cave, the Tremorzaurus. This guy will be aggressive against most of the mobs in here, picking them up, throwing them around, and eating them. Their scream will make other mobs flee, and the way you tame this big guy is by whacking him in the head with the club, stunning it, and then feeding it some serene salad. This might take a few time, and I suggest that you bait the scream before hitting it so you don't receive too much damage. And after a few tries, you're gonna tame yourself a Tremorzaurus. A left click will make the beast bite, and the G will make it scream and make every mobs around flee. They can be bred with Dino Chop, and when they die, they will drop Dinosaur Chop and Heavy Bones. Right, and we're now done with the Primal Shot Cave, which means it's time to move on to Magnetic Caves. This cave is filled with pillars of Neodymium Magnets that come out from everywhere. It is mostly made of a stone called Galena. The Galena can be transformed in multiple type of blocks, but also come Packed into packed galena that once smelted will turn into iron nuggets. So it is a really bad source of iron, but it's everywhere. In the cave, you'll also find vein of energized galena that comes in two variants: the scarlet one and the azure one. And when they meet, they will make energized galena. Both of them can be crafted, they can be silk touch, and when added together, can give the energized galena. There's also a few galena iron ore here and there in the cave, and also some patches of metal swarf. It is fairly common, but you can also craft it. If you cook it, it becomes scrap metal, and the scrap metal can be transformed into metal plate, rebar, scaffolding, and even metal barrel. You can also craft a magnetic activator, but we're gonna talk about that a bit later. Now, if you have nothing on you, the cave will not be a problem, but the neodymium blocks have some properties if you're holding some metal object. The scarlet one will drag you to it, while the azure one will push you away from it. If you are wearing iron boots, you're gonna be pushed away from the azure one, but you will be attracted to the scarlet one, but also you will cling to the wall or the roof 
And it can be quite disorienting if you try to go around in these caves. If you break the pillar, it will either drop itself or some raw scarlet neodymium. The nodes will always drop raw neodymium, and those can be crafted into ingots. Both type of ingots can be made into blocks like iron. The scarlet one can be crafted into seeking arrows that will target any entities that it passes next to. Be careful because these arrows are also attracted to your item frame. The azure one can be crafted into magnetic rails that will make your cart levitate that goes way faster than any other tracks. Neodymium ingots can also be used to craft either type of magnet. These magnets can be used to push or pull any type of metal blocks if powered by a redstone signal. They will also push any other magnetic blocks attached to them. You can also increase their range by right clicking with an ingot of the same type or decrease their range by clicking by the opposite one. Earlier we talked about the magnetic activity and it will emit a redstone signal if powered by a magnet. Now, all the mobs of this case are aggressive except one, the Notor. This little passive helicopter will roam around and scan entities. Although they are passive, they are not really a good thing because any hostile mob that sees your hologram made by them will know your location. Like, this guy is agreeing right now. He's like, yes, kill carrot thing. If you kill a Notor, they can drop their Notor gizmo. This thing is the main ingredient to craft holocoder and hologram projector. With a holocoder, you can right click on any mob and it will register it into the holocoder if, if you right click a projector with it it's gonna display a hologram of that mob it is also used to craft magnetic light but we'll talk about that later the theater is a flying hostile mob that carries a magnetic weapon or tool above its head it is highly aggressive and it will swing this weapon at you i'm almost dead sometimes the weapon or tool can even be enchanted on death it can drop both type of raw neodymium and a telecore the telecore can be used to craft tesla bulb and these bulb can be also found anywhere in the cave at the top of a spire C can you please and these things pretty much act like an end crystal the telecar can also be used to craft the Galena Gauntlet. When using your oven, you can make your weapon go away and hit mobs. You can also use tool to mine stuff at a distance. If it detects the right tool, it's gonna mine the block. Ferrous slime or magnetic slime that can float around in the cave. They can only move in a straight line and they're gonna try to reach to you, ow. And opposite to normal slime, they can combine and become bigger. The more head in the slime, the stronger it is. The smaller slime will drop up ferrous slime ball. These slime bars are used to make metal swarf, but also part of the Galena Gauntlet. They are also used into breathing. They are also used into brewing the potion of magnetizing. And if you drink it, it will act the same as if you have metal boots. Can I be pushed away by this magnet? Yes, I can. The bound throwers are a two-in-one entity that latch onto the ceiling and dangle a weight on a winch. These guys will attempt to smack your head with their weight, but it leaves them vulnerable so you can hit them. Shooting the top part of the boundary will make it fall, leaving it open for hits. On death, it will drop chains, but also a heavyweight. Its only use is to craft the Magnetic Quarry Smasher that we will see very soon. And finally, the last mob is the Magnetron. It looks pretty inoffensive at a passive state, but if you provoke it by just being near it, it will use the blocks around it to form a body and fight. It will prioritize metal blocks, and as you can see, it took the anvil. Anvil and grindstone will make it attack strong. Stronger. On death, it will drop the blocks it's made of and also drop a heart of iron. This heart of iron is used to make the resistor shield. If you right click with the shield on the blue side, it will push mobs away. But if you crouch and right click, it will invert the signal and move the mobs closer to you while also damaging them. And finally, with the heart of iron, you can craft the magnetic quarry. To make the quarry work, you will need the four magnetic light that you crafted earlier. You have to make a square or a rectangle next to the quarry and place the magnetic quarry smasher in the middle. You have to make sure that there's nothing in this electric field and as soon as everything is clear the quarry will start working and it's gonna dig everything inside of this square. Every time it hits it's gonna mine a block. I guess you're gonna make sure that there's nothing above. There we go. And things are gonna get spitted out of the quarry onto the ground. So if you're playing vanilla with Alex Cave I suggest that you put a hopper but it's just an item so any modded way to catch item will work. It will work all the way down until it can't and after this state it will become inactive and you can move it somewhere else. While exploring you might find some mining facility with some loot inside. So now that we've seen everything from the magnetic cave it is time to jump to the forlorn hollow an extremely dark and gloomy biome enshrouded by darkness. So for the sake 
of the video, we're gonna put on night vision. This biome is entirely made of guanostone and coprolith. Guanostone is basically bad poop, and coprolith is fossilized poop, so yeah, this biome is fully made out of poop. I've seen poop way too much. The guanostone can be turned into many blocks, and you can also find some guanostone redstone ore scattered around in the cave, and the coprolith can also be turned into many blocks. You need to cook coprolith if you want the smooth variant. You can also find coprolith coal ore, but also polvoroth coprolith, made out of coprolith, and peering coprolith. Scattered in the cave, there is some guano pile, and if you break it, you will get some guano. The guano can be made back into guano block, or fertilizer. Fertilizer is like a more powerful bone meal, but it is also used to make the torn wood sapling, to make the torn wood tree. Speaking of which, this wood can be crafted into everything wood. Now, moving on to the mobs, you will find flying around some glue moth. These little fellas are attracted to torch, so if you put some torch around, you will have these guys turning around. They are hunted by the vespers, and when they die, they will drop moth dust. Moth dust can be used to craft moth ball, and these moth ball can be placed to repel the moth. The vespers are gigantic bats that will rest on the ceiling of the cave. As soon as they see you, they will immediately latch onto you, making them one of the most annoying mobs in the game. I hate them so much. But although annoying, these bats are extremely useful because they drop guano, but also vesper wings. And vesper wings can make the vespers too. One of the only fort source with the vesper wing itself in the cave. If eaten, the vespers too will give you night vision for two minutes. The underzealot is a little mole cultist that will mostly hunt and pack. If they want to reach you, they can dig underground and come up to another place. If killed, they mostly will drop Dark Tatters. The Dark Tatters can be made into black wool. It is one of the ingredients to make borrowing arrows. It is also the main ingredient of the Shadow Silk that we will check on later. But the Yonder Salad have a 2.5% chance to drop a Desolate Dagger. Although this dagger only has 4 attack damage, it will always do a second hit after you hit a mob with it. The Yonder Zealot can grab a Glue Moth or a Vesper and start doing a ritual. And this is how we're gonna get our next mob that we're gonna check. If they grab a glue moth, and there's at least five under zealot, they will make a dark ritual, and the glue moth will become a watcher. When the watcher sees you, it will take possession of your body, and you won't be able to move, but you will be able to see from the eyes of the watcher, and after that, it's gonna attack you. The watcher can see you from very, very far away. As you can see, I killed one, and there's another one through the wall that can see me right now. It can somehow affect me in creative mode. Now, the Corrodent is a little rodent that can dig into the ground. You can track its movement by the destruction of the blocks. These guys are scared of light, so if you want to make them back off, you can just place down a torch. Please note that these guys, the Underzealot, can extinguish torch. When killed, they will drop coarse dirt and Corrodent teeth. These teeth make the borrowing arrow. An arrow that, when shot, will dig into the block that it's shot at. It can dig down up to five block. It can even dig obsidian and leave the block behind. The Watcher will drop an occult gem. With this occult gem, you can make a beholder. Once you have crafted a beholder, you can place it somewhere and bind it with another occult gem. You can go anywhere in your world and if you right-click this occult gem, you will see through the eye of the beholder. Note that this doesn't work through dimensions. And finally, if the Underzealots grab a Vesper, be ready to face one of the strongest creatures in this mod, the Forsaken, this giant monster bat creature, and is aggressive against pretty much anything. It has a wide scream attack, can grab mobs and bite them, leap into the air, and once it's reached half health, it's gonna turn black and start regenerating at a low rate of 1 health per second. When killed, it will drop pure darkness, unlocking the final things in the mod. The first thing you can craft with it is Shadow Silk. And Shadow Silk, combined with Occult Gem, lets you make the Cloak of Darkness and the Hood of Darkness. When you're wearing both piece, and while you're in pure darkness, you will see a meter fill up at the bottom of your screen. When this meter is full, you can hit G, and it will turn into a floating state of darkness. While in this form, you move extremely fast, but only for a short period of time. You can eat a darkened apple to extend the length of your effect. And lastly, you can craft the Dread Bow. When fired with normal arrow, it will launch a volley of arrow from the sky, 
hitting where you're looking at. It's basically the deadly storm bow from Terraria. But you can also use any type of arrows, you just don't have the shadow effect. And yes, you can even use the borrowing arrows if you want to dig some areas. And now that we're done with the forlorn hollow, it's time that we move on to the toxic cave. One of the most inhospitable cave in Alex Caves. This cave is mostly made out of mud, but a stone called Rad Rock. Like any other stone, it can be made into multiple blocks, but you will also find acidic Rad Rock. If mine, the acidic Rad Rock will turn into acid. Now, the acid in Toxic Cave is a liquid that, like lava, will burn items. It does a bit less damage than lava, but will destroy your armor durability extremely fast. It has multiple interaction with water and lava. If acid meets water, it's gonna give mud. If lava meets flowing acid, it's gonna form cobblestone. But if lava meets a source of acid, it's gonna turn into red rock. Just like lava, you can't make an infinite source of acid with two blocks, but if you use sulfur bud or sulfur cluster, it will fill up and become a source block, which means you can have an infinite source of acid. Now, scattered around the cave, you will find uranium ore. Like any ore, uranium can be turned into shard or converted into a block of uranium. Uranium is used to craft uranium rod that can be used for light or to fuel the nuclear furnace. Inside the toxic cave, you will find unrefined waste mostly laying on the side of acid touching the unrefined waste will give you irradiated irradiated will turn your heart yellow with a sign of radiation and it will prevent any healing you will glow a taint of green and if you receive damage you cannot heal naturally Unrefined waste can be smelted into uranium shard. It is used to craft the waste drum and trying to destroy the waste drum like throwing it in lava will result in an explosion that will irradiate you that also includes cactus but not blowing it up with a TNT. Unrefined sand is affected by gravity, which means it will drop, but it has a weird property. If it lands on mud, it will drop itself, or if it lands on itself, it will drop. I haven't found any other block that does that, only mud in itself. This cinder block can be found in some of these structures, inside barrels, or as part of the structure. And the cinder bricks can make cinder blocks that can be also turned into other blocks. Around the cave, you will find sulfur blocks with sulfur cluster. If you mine the cluster, you will gain sulfur dust. Sulfur dust is used to make polymer that we'll see later, gunpowder, sulfur block, but also some special food that can heal you if you're irradiated. Sulfur cluster only grow if it touch acid or if acidic red rock is placed above sulfur block. You can also find some metal swarf that is exactly the same thing as in the magnetic cave, but with acid you can rust any of the metal blocks. You can use an empty bottle on this geothermal vent to collect radon. The bottle of radon is used to make the siren light, but also radon lamps from all colors of the game. Now moving on to the mobs, we have the Brainiac. This hulking monkey with a big brain is an undead aggressive against any player. If you're far away, it will attack you with its tongue, irradiating you for 20 seconds. If you're close enough, it's just gonna hit you up. If it's below 75% of its HP, it's gonna throw this waste drum that will turn into acid. If it has no waste drum and found one on the ground, it's gonna grab it and put it on its back. If the brain ice is below 50% of its health, it's gonna drink its own acid to gain health. On death, it can drop green soylent or charred remnant. Green soylent, just like the food made out of sulfur, you can eat it and it's gonna heal you even if you're irradiated. The charred remnant can be used to craft the nuclear siren. The nuclear siren will emit a loud sound if any imminent nuclear explosion is going to happen. The siren will make sound within 128 block of an imminent explosion. But a charred remnant is also used to make the nuclear furnace component. To make the nuclear furnace, you need 8 block placed in a 2x2x2 cube. The nuclear furnace will smelt ore extremely fast, but you need uranium rod to make it work. It's gonna smell 60 item, but it's gonna produce waste. And the way to dispose of waste is to use a metal barrel in this slot here, and it's gonna fill up and give you a waste drum. If you don't collect the waste, the nuclear furnace will overheat and after 10 uranium rod, the nuclear furnace will explode like a nuclear explosion, throwing unrefined waste everywhere in the explosion. Also, while it is working, if you jump in the center, you're gonna get irradiated 5. This will basically mean that you will also take damage when you're irradiated. The Gamrosh is a giant insect that will spawn anywhere in the cave. It is normally neutral, but if you are irradiated, it will go pick up a mob and bring it to you and then fight you. 
If you're not irradiated and you fight a cockroach, it's gonna spit a pool of irradiation and if you step in it, you're gonna get irradiated. If you kill the gamma roach, it's gonna drop toxic paste. Toxic paste can be turned into red rock, unrefined waste or polymer plate. Polymer plate is the main ingredient to craft the hazmat suit. A suit of armor that will give you armor but also reduce the effect of irradiated and the effect of armor degradation in acid. Polymer plate can also be used to craft the hazmat block. Now swimming in pools of acid are the rad gill. These three-eyed fish, straight out of the Simpsons, will sometimes jump out of the acid. And that's pretty much your time to catch them or fight them. Right now, it is a bit bugged. Their HP has the same value as the new Clipper, and I think it's supposed to be lower. These guys can be pocketed with a bucket of acid, and if you kill them, they will drop itself. They can be cooked to give you a better source of food, but raw, it can be used to tame the Ray Cat. If you are irradiated and within 28 block of a Ray Cat, the ray cat can suck out the radiation out of you and healing the ray cat in the same time. Oh, there we go. The ray cat has one other utility and it is to scare the new Clipper. These guys are extremely afraid of ray cats. They act like any creeper would, but once they get near you and they start their explosion, nothing can really stop that unless you kill it. A ray cat will reverse the process of explosion. If the two metal parts of its head collide, the new clipper will go critical and will explode in a nuclear explosion. Giving you irradiated 2, new clipper drops gunpowder, but the fissile core. The fissile core with uranium rod and polymer can make the ray gun. Ray gun create a ray in front of it that damage the mobs extremely rapidly, ignoring iframe and giving the irradiated effect. It is extremely useful against the mob that regenerate fast, like the Tremorsaurus. The ray gun use uranium rod as fuel. And finally, the last thing that the fissile core can make is the remote detonator and the nuclear bomb. The remote detonator grants you the ability to detonate any type of TNT from a certain distance away. But it is way more useful to put it on the nuclear bomb, which has a radius way bigger than the two other explosions we saw earlier. Because when it explodes, it leaves behind a giant creature and gives irradiated effect to anything that survived the blast. Naturally in the config, the blocks that are exploded by the nuke will all drop on the floor, so it is a good way to farm some items. I forgot to mention, but simply having waste drum or unrefined waste in your inventory is enough to give you the irradiated effect. And now that we're done with the toxic cave, it's finally time to go to our last cave, the Abyssal Chasm. This giant cavern is found underwater and it is extremely dark down there, so you need a new effect called Deep Sight. The exterior wall of the cavern is made out of Abyss Marine. Abyss Marine can be made into multiple blocks as well as the altar that we'll see later. Bomb block can be smelted and crafted into multiple different shapes. And you'll also find these blocks on the fossil of whales. The ground of the chasm is made out of muck. You will sink in it and be extremely slowed just like soul sand. Breaking muck can sometimes drop sea glass that can be turned into death glass. Unlike regular glass, if you're not using a texture pack, have the texture connected. The floor of the Abyssal Chasm have multiple life form. The bone worm, the tube worm, and the anemones are purely decorative and you can find them anywhere in the cave, except for the bone worm that you will only find on bones. The only use of the pink bone sponge is to make the floater that we'll see later. And there's the muscle. Muscle can grow, but will grow faster on logs. The muscle will drop themselves and can be cooked to be eaten. Sometimes the mussel can drop a pearl, the pearl can make pearl block and the abyssal altar and also to be used as an offering for the deep ones. The diving armor cannot be crafted, but sometimes a drown that spawn in the abyssal chasm will spawn with a piece of armor and killing that drown has a chance to drop the armor. You can repair the armor with a copper ingot. The helmet will give you 40 seconds of water breathing, the chest plate gives you one additional toughness, the diving legging will boost your swimming speed and the diving boot make you immune to the effect of the muck. Now moving on to the mob, we have the lantern fish. You will find them in numbers moving up at the surface at night, so you can spot the abyssal chasm if you spot those at the surface. They can be bucketed, and if you kill them, they will drop themselves. The item version can be eaten, cooked, then eaten, or turned into deep sea sushi roll. And the lantern fish is also the only ingredient needed to craft the potion of deep sight. The sea pig is an invertebrate that roam at the floor of the abyssal chasm. It can be bucketed too. If you kill it, it's gonna drop itself. You can eat it, but you're gonna get hunger. Sea pig are also part of the deep 
see Shushi roll. You can feed them muck, clay ball, or mud, and they can drop multiple items. They will mostly drop Marion Snow that you can make pearl with, but it also acts like an underwater bone mill. You can multiply anemones and make the muscle multiply. They can sometimes drop pearls, and it is also said that they can drop sea glass, but I've been trying for like 20 minutes and I haven't got any. Tripod fish can be found at the bottom of the water, tripoding, they will drop themselves, they can be bucketed, they can be eaten, and it is also used to make the deep sea sushi roll. The gossamer worm is another bucketable fish that will drop bioluminescence. It is also the favorite food source of the hull breaker, as well as glow squid. Bioluminescence can be brewed into potion of glowing, it can also make bioluminescent torch that can be placed underwater, and it is also used to make the floater. The floater is like a panic button, if you want to go up to the surface extremely fast, you can activate the floater and just go straight up to the surface. The mine guardian will always spawn around these structures. They are blind, except when they open their single eye. When they open this eye, they now can see you, and when they see you, there is pretty much nothing you can do and it will explode. It also destroys block underwater. You might be able to outrun them if you have Death Strider because they are tied to the ground with an anchor. They cannot go further than this. If you kill a Mind Guardian, they will drop Death Charge. Death Charge works like explosive even underwater, destroying blocks. But it is also the recipe to craft the Drain. If powered by Redstone, a Drain will make water flow below it, draining the surface. The Deep Ones are a race of intelligent underwater creatures that will act in a way towards the player based on their reputation. This reputation can be increased by bartering with them or decreased by attacking them. Your reputation with them will also increase ever so slightly if you kill a Mine Guardian. The reputation is separated by phases. The first time you'll see Deep Ones, they will be cautious, stalking you from a distance but never really going towards you. After a few trades, the Deep One will regard you with neutrality, which means they will not flee if you go near them. The next step, they will regard you as a friend, which means they will also help you in combat. But if you attack them too much, they will become aggressive and will start attacking you on sight. For their attacks, the normal Deep One will go towards you and just hit you with their claw. The Deep One Knight has two variants, the one with a spear and one with a trident. They can drop their spear or their trident on death. And finally, the Deep One Mage is a very unique one that has many abilities. It has a wave ability, a projectile is gonna spin for a melee attack and if they ever fight you above ground they can inflict you the bubble debuff it's gonna put you in a bubble that will drown you right now I have water breathing and it's the only way to counter the effect of the bubble in the cave you will find these altar that if you put a pearl on the altar a deep one will come to it grab the pearl and replace it with an item you will know that they traded when the pillar glow each deep one has their own table of bartering I'm not gonna go in detail on every item they can trade, but we're gonna go over the unique item from the mod that they can trade. First of all, the normal deep one can trade you the Gazing Pearl. This pearl tells you the reputation you have with the deep one. Right now, it is glistening with malevolence, which means they will attack me on sight. But when your reputation goes up, the pearl will change color and the text will change. The other unique item that the Deep One can trade you is the Ink Bomb. If thrown on a player, will inflict blindness. The Deep One Knight can trade the Ortho Lens and the Magic Conch. The Ortho Lens is a jousting lens that you can right-click to launch forward while also doing the wave attack that the mage can do. The Magic Conch will summon... Summon? Hello? Will summon a bunch of deep one to help you in combat. They will always be helpful regardless of your situation with them, but watch out not to hit them or this will reduce your reputation. And turns out it doesn't work on snow because they just didn't spawn on snow, I had to remove snow. Yep, it's not working on snow. The Deep One Mage will give you the Glow Ink Bomb. These bombs work the same way as the normal one, but they also give you the glowing effect, which can be useful if you want to make the Hullbreaker attack something. And finally, the Deep One Mage will give you the Deep Sea Staff, which throw water projectile that are heat-seeking. It can also be spammed really fast. Then finally, we have the Hull Breaker. The Hull Breaker, surprisingly, is a neutral mob that will not attack you on sight as long as you don't have glowing. This thing is attracted to glowing effect like the Glow Squid. It is extremely dangerous, has 400 HP, can destroy blocks, but if you kill it, it will spew out a bunch of copper, some sea glass, but also one or two Enigmatic Engine. Enigmatic Engine is used to make the sub 
submarine. Now, the submarine can also be found hidden sometime inside a cave, a bit broken, but these broken submarines can be fixed with copper, and when repaired, can be driven around the cave. You can press G to open the floodlight, so if you don't have deep sight, you can at least see a bit better. But watch out for hull breaker, because if you keep your light open near the hull breaker, it's gonna get angry. Watch out not to hit your submarine or get attacked too much, because it can get destroyed. But don't worry, you can craft a new one with the enigmatic engine. To craft a submarine, you have to put the enigmatic engine around the cube of copper with six death glass on the front top. And once placed, it's gonna instantly summon a submarine. Watch out where you put this thing, because I don't think there's a way to put that in your inventory, and it is extremely hard to push around on land. And finally, submarine can also be found inside the structure. And if they are oxidized, you can scrub the oxidation with an axe. You can even wax the submarine with honeycomb. I know I'm pretty late to make a showcase on Alex Cave, but I hope you enjoyed and I hope that you found something useful in this showcase. And I recorded this showcase near the release of the Eruption update. So if the update has already come out, you will probably see a showcase right now on the screen and you can go watch the showcase on this new update. Or else there's gonna be another video and I suggest that you still click on it. And as always, you're awesome and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!